Toyota has suspended driverless car tests following the fatal accident involving a self-driving Uber. Some are arguing that companies are rushing this technology to the streets without sufficient testing. Joining us now is Jim Scheinman, managing partner at, May, partner at Maven Ventures. He invests in autonomous companies, autonomous car companies. He says we should move faster to improve the technology and get it out there. Also, Mary Cummings uh, rejoins us. She's a professor of robotics at Duke who believes this technology should not be widely deployed. Welcome to both of you. One of the things that struck me was that Maricopa County, where this fatality took place, had the second highest number of pedestrian fatalities uh, in 2016, the last year for which data are available, exceeded only by Los Angeles. 133 pedestrians killed uh, in Maricopa, where Tempe is. What does that tell you, if anything, Mr. Uh, Mr. Scheinman, about where these cars ought to be deployed or whether they're ready? Well, first of all, thanks for having me. I'm delighted to be here. Um, you know, the, uh, this is a, it's a tragic situation, and we still don't know really the data, the facts of what, what exactly happened, although some preliminary data is that it was probably um, more human error caused than, than machine error in, in this particular incident. Who's, which, who's um, human? Who's the human here? The pedestrian? Well, I mean, one of the reports was that it was a pedestrian jumping out of the shadows. Again, I, I don't know. I haven't. That's what I've read. I mean, I think, look, the, the reality is in the last 24 hours, what we're not going to talk about is the 100 people who have been killed by human errors uh, on the road today. And, you know, what we have to remember is that there's, there's, there's a reason why uh, we need to have self-driving vehicles on the road today. It's going to make our, the world a better place. We're going to save nearly a million lives uh, with, you know, tens of millions of people who would have been uh, injured otherwise by human error. It's going to be, you know, we're not going to have traffic. It's going to be a much more productive society. People who can drive today, the blind, um, and, you know, as we have an aging population, the elderly who live into the 80s, 90s, and 100s won't be able to drive. We're going to solve all those problems. It's mm -hmm. going to be a much safer place at scale. And, and you know, when, when a tragic situation happens, I think we have to have a measured reaction to so, this. So there's the, there, there's the, the argument uh, eloquently put by Jim Scheinman, Mary Cummings. How do you respond to it? And, and if the technology can be made to work, will the, the streets and highways be safer and less congested? Well, first of all, I think it's completely unacceptable to both shame and blame a person who lost their life over this. There's no question that this woman did not jump out of the shadows. She was pushing a bike, and it looks like she was pushing her bike towards what looked to be a very beautifully enticing walkway on the other side of the street that had a very small sign that was no doubt unreadable to her that pedestrians should not cross there, even though it very much looked like a pedestrian crossing. So I think first, the county needs to look at its own road design. I think that we'll find that they're going to be culpable because if they had posted a sign there, then it's probably we're going to find in the past that other pedestrians were hit there. So um, I think blaming the victim is not the right thing to do. But on the broader question of whether this technology is safe, it is unquestionably not safe. We know that the perception systems of these cars are deeply flawed, and you can go to every single company, and if they're honest with you, they're going to tell you that they have major gaps in computer vision, sensor fusion, building of world models that comes from all the data that they're gathering. And I have been advocating for some time that these tests, these cars need vision tests. We certify and license humans by just checking their vision. I think we need to do the same for cars. So, Mary, is it that it's, it sounds like, I mean, eloquently put all your concerns about what's wrong with these cars at this moment, but it sounds like eventually maybe you would be okay with them as long as they were tested better. Is that you are against them, period, or against them right now? I, it's a great question. Look, I'm a robotics professor. I'm very pro-technology. I also have a 10-year-old, and I would like these cars in place before she turns 16. So I'm very much pro the technology, but what I'm not um, advocating for is to put these cars on public streets and use the public as guinea pigs testing these technologies, which is, in fact, what is happening. There are no set of accepted standardized tests that these vehicles have to go through to prove that they're worthy to be on the roads. You would never go to an airport and fly in an airplane with a brand new Autoland system that had never been tested before. Driverless cars, their 
technology on board, it's much more complicated than that of an, auto of an automated landing mm -hmm. aircraft. So mm -hmm. if it's that much more complex, why are we not insisting that these cars are tested in formal settings before we deploy them on public let, let, let me pose that question to Jim Scheinman. Uh, yeah. You've heard uh, the professor's it, argument there, sure. and, and uh, she makes some very good points. Uh, and I guess yeah, part I just, of the, uh, go ahead. You, you take it. I just want to clarify. I, you know, clearly don't want to uh, you know put shame and, and victim blame. I think it's a tragic situation, as I said. And I'm not here to defend Uber. If they were at fault, they, then they should be punished. I, I, my point is that the industry at large shouldn't be punished. And and maybe it's you know Uber and Lyft and companies that are doing ride sharing shouldn't be focused on self driving technology. The companies that we invest in, for example, we were in the first investors in Cruise, which is now part of GM. That safety first, you know, May Mobility, which is one of our companies in Detroit, but get, is focused get to the, on safety first. Get to the professor's first. point, Jim, if I might, yeah. uh, on, on sure. the, the, the wisdom or the um, ethics, I guess, is really her drive there, uh, that, yeah. that these things should not be tested in a live uh, environment on highways and streets with real human beings just yet. Yeah, I, I mean, I disagree with that. I think that, the, again, the... the the companies that we look to back have, have founders who put safety first, and there are standards in place. I think I do agree that you know those standards are going to be uh, you know tested and and improved. Um, but uh, I, I think that the right thing to do is to to test this in controlled environments and to put safety first. Um, and it's the way that we're going to move forward much quicker to get to market first. And you know there are well, then special does this, interests. Does this meet the category of a controlled environment then to you? Does what what seems to have happened in Tempe? Um, I think that there are, you know, again, I don't know the specifics of that specific, you know, of, of right. what happened. So I can't, I don't want to comment on that. Um, and I don't want to, you know, but yeah. I, I think that there are, yes, there are controlled environments. For example, May Mobility is working in downtown Detroit in a controlled mm -hmm. environment and, and there's safety first. Okay. Embark, which is doing self-driving trucks, is working in controlled environments, bringing uh, long haul trucking across the country. And we are very focused on the safety issues, and I, right. I, I think these are, these are, these are concerns right. that we have. I'm sorry we're out of time. We have to leave it there. Jim Scheinman, we appreciate your time. It was a good conversation. Mary Cummins uh, of Duke, uh, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Hey there. Thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.